Hello and welcome to ALW Research Team. Behind me is one of the bridges on the part of the East Coast Main Line that is now disused. But down there, there's some World War II remains that we're going to go look at. So we'll let this bicycle go past because it is part of the Trans Pennine Trail York to Selby route, which is also a cycle track. So we'll see some bicyclists as we go down to look at the defences on a bridge going over the River Ouse. So we'll see you there. Construction of the Nairburn Swing Bridge started in 1870 and was commissioned the following year. This formed part of the North Eastern Railway's flagship route between Edinburgh and London. The River Ouse at the time was in use by large ships and barges and as such the navigable route was given precedence over the railway. This meant an opening of the bridge span to let shipping through, hence the swing section of the bridge. Thomas Elliot Harrison was the chief engineer for the North Eastern Railway. An apprentice trained railway architect and construction engineer, Harrison had worked closely with George and Robert Stevenson, both of which held Harrison in high regard. The North Eastern Railway commissioned Harrison to design and construct the bridge at Nairburn. At this time, Harrison was also the 17th President of the Institution of Civil Engineers. A centre-loaded pontoon design was chosen with a swing section on the north bank and a static section on the south bank of the river. This fulfilled the requirements of the Act of Parliament that was in place to ensure that shipping would not be affected on the ooze. The bridge was opened and closed from a control cabin which was situated on top of the cast iron bridge. Motive force was provided by a steam boiler which in turn operated an engine which drove the large gear wheel which turned the steel rollers operating the bridge. During commissioning, however, it was found that the large gear wheel was cavitating from its axis and this was going to cause a catastrophic failure in the gear wheel. Thomas Elliot Harrison redesigned the drivetrain to a bevel gear system which had multiple loading bearings. This fixed the problem. Simply called Design 2, this system can still be seen on site today. In 2001, the Fisher of Dreams, a galvanised sculpture designed by local artist Pete Rogers, was installed on the girders, formerly used by the control cabin. Looking at this map here, this is where the East Coast Mainland used to come up. There used to be a station there that's obviously gone now. Uh, we're just up here, we're off this route. The reason this is here is the closing this route soon for resurfacing. So, if you're going to come and have a look at this yourself when this video comes out, uh, just check it's open because they are going to resurface all this. And it's going to take about 12 weeks this year. So they're going to completely close it off. But the reason we're here is to look at these fortifications that were added during the Second World War. Over this bridge, I believe there's another one on that side, so we'll check that one out too been painted up a bit to make it look nice. I believe there's some uh, some like all it's but I don't know if they've cut it back to make it safer rather than remove it completely. We'll take a look down the side there. We'll try and get down here a bit. It's a bit slippery. So let's have a look. Just have a look around here. Yeah so there's been all it's look and they've filled them in little bits where they can observe through and fire through, they filled those in it's World War II era that is the bridge over the Ouse so let's get back up, we can see here this is all packing from the uh, probably 1970s, 1980s, that's BR type can you see that viewers? where the spy used to swing round this, this part here we're going to go down there in a bit and have a look at that. But they've, I think they've used a particular type of material there. 
to make the little A4 class train that's swinging there to make it make a noise. So you can, can you hear that? It sounds like a fishing rod. So we've got the, the cable runner here from when, the, when this would have been an active railway swing bridge and the pieces of wood that I think would have been part of it as well and then we've got what looks like followers here you see them Dave? Yep. followers there the cables that would have come down from the control room that would have been on top there so we're just passing to this side now this is the south side of the river and we can see two loophole to wall arrangements here these are a type to protect up and down the river to protect the railway so we can see on this one they haven't filled the observation holes in so you've got a firing arc from there to there and there would have been a shelf here for a mountain probably for a Bren gun or a Vickers MMG to fire through here to protect the railway got another one there that broke the broke the shelf off for whatever reason and then the loophole wall here to fire from And we've got the similar loophole wall arrangement here. Part of it has been demolished again. It's been partly demolished there. You can see where they've added it to the existing structure of the bridge. Oh yeah. We've got nice, quite a quaint little boat, high seas going down there. So we're looking north on the bridge and the loophole wall arrangement there. We're just going to go down to the riverbank. Hopefully without slipping or falling. But you are you are allowed to laugh if I do slip. I'm just looking at the architecture here. And I love this. On the period builds of the railways, as a noisy boat goes past. These the finishings in the stonework in the ashlar, all carved out to make it look nice. It's those sort of finishing touches that are just not present on modern builds now. It's just concrete, brutalistic, squared off concrete. But the sandstone here is beautifully carved. And that would have been done by hand. And it's been here ever since. And is now part of a footpath that goes between Selby and York on the Trans Pennine Trail. Let's look down at the river bank here. You can see. The workings over there of the old swing part of the bridge. So we go under here. Let's have a look at the material state of this bridge structure. Now, due to it being in use until the 1980s, it's in pretty good nick. We're going to go look at the workings over there of how this bridge used to swing, so keep watching and we'll see you over that side just spotted in the greenery there there's an old stake there that would have held a wire to hold a telegraph pole up more than likely just down here near the loophole wall like a bit of hand drill there as if someone used to have to go down there to maintain something it says danger no access fragile no access down there can you see that viewers so let's catch Dave up then to look at the workings of this 1871 Nairburn Swing Bridge. This was in use until 1983 when it was put into disuse by British Railways during the electrification of the East Coast Main Line. So we can still see some electrics do still go over it. As we're looking at the hand carved sandstone and ashlar cap in there that's joined by the loot hole wall from the Second World War fortifications 
of this swing bridge. So we're just going to make our way around there so we're not trespassing in this sailing club because we can get to that side. There's a slipway there, so does that mean it's slippery? It is slippery, yeah. That's a nice view there, isn't it? It is. A couple of branches this way, but... Yeah. See that, viewers? That is the Nairburn Railway Bridge from 1871. And it was in use as a railway bridge until 1983. So, viewers, we can see there, that's where I was looking at earlier. Down when we was in the centre section of the bridge and there's a little walkway there. So maintainers would have had to go down there to check on the shoes of the bridge because the bridge would have swung round and it sat on shoes to support it when the railway engines went above. Railway engines and rolling stock. You can see some more, there's some more gantry here but it's had the wood taken away from it. There would have been wood on there for personnel to walk on to check the status of this wonderful Nairburn Railway Bridge. 1871 Victorian Engineering at its finest. So viewers, how did this bridge open and close? Well what there was, there was a steam boiler and then down in this area there was a steam engine and that steam engine rotated a shaft and that shaft went on to here and these bevel gears here rotated this one rotated horizontally that one rotated vertically and that went up into there into the windings of the bridge and can you see those large wheels up there viewers well they go all the way around and those wheels rotated and that swung the bridge open 90 degrees and that is how this bridge opened. This was part of the second design to open and close this bridge. There was a first design and that failed. There was too much torque on the large gears, on the large bevels, and that was removed. I think that rod that comes down the centre there to that, to that crank, that would have come from the cabin upstairs so yes. that would have operated the, 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 the bridge to open and so close it. open and close, close the bridge because from... Because it's going up the centre, it, the rotation of the bridge wouldn't affect the operation of it. No. Yeah. Yeah, because it's on the centre line, that's got a piston in it. And this rod gearing, this rod section coming down, would have actuated the bridge to open and close. 1871 engineering. Now this bridge was still in use until 1983 but there was a parliamentary act in 1967 that stated that this bridge didn't need to swing anymore so all this was put into disuse but the lines above were still in use until 1983 when this part of the East Coast Main Line was diverted and then put this part of the line into disuse. Now, is Dave going to climb the ladder? I was thinking about it, but then that is just hung very precariously on two, <laughs> two rusty bolts. It is a bit, isn't it? There's nothing supporting that other than no. two rusty bolts. And all that I take you to, I believe, is... Is that the concrete capping on top? There's a hatch there. I don't know yeah. if you can see the hatch. Uh, and that would open up the concrete capping. Yeah, you'd have so, to push quite hard to lift the concrete capping up. I want to think uh, initially that uh, that would be the access into here. I thought we'd think these would be windows would be glazed and probably bars on them. I think they would have been. I saw around here earlier when I was looking at this bridge. We can see here there's remains of putty. Can you see that, viewers? where there would have been large windows in these openings. You can see some more putty there, where there was windows. So I'll have a look online if there's any copyright free photographs. If not, just give it a Google into and have a look at the old photographs that were online. 
for this wonderful engineering marvel of a swing bridge. We're just looking up at the wear on the wheels viewers and there is a lot of wear on the wheels so it has, it has been opened and closed quite a lot because there used to be large goods barges come down the river rivers it was a busy river before road traffic took a lot of the freight away. So I'm just looking at that plate in front of me here. There's a, there's a couple of slots in it and they're directly below that lever that we pointed out before. So I think it, from that it was possible to operate the bridge for a minute here. Oh, local control? Yeah. Yeah, onto those rods and pistons that are there. Yeah. Yeah, so the cabin above could operate it and it could also be operated in local yep. down here. I guess so. Can you imagine the noise of this entire structure rotating above? Yeah. That sounds amazing. But it's had no maintenance for what, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, until 50 years. So I've had no maintenance for 50 years, 55 years. But it's, what, what gets me is you can still see where the wheels have been rotating. So it has been opened and closed quite a lot. It now just sits silently as a cycle track. So we're just outside now and we're just looking at the, the walkway that used to be on here. And Dave's discovered why it was here because round this part there's an inspection hatch to get to the other side of the large wheels to get to the bearings on the wheels. Now we've got what is a truly magnificent bracket there. You see that viewers? That is the probably the best hanging basket bracket in York. So in the 1950s there was a barge and it broke away from its tug during a flood of the River Ouse. The water level was quite high and there was a bit of a current and the tug hit this pillar here and if you can see in the centre section there it's been repaired and the repair was, can you see in the centre there viewers, where, let's have a look, let's get that on there, we're just trying to brighten it up for you, can you see the centre circle and then below it there's a large chunk of the cast missing and that is from the damage caused by the tug hitting it, correction the barge hitting it and it broke a piece of the bridge away causing quite substantial damage so it's had to be repaired and it was made safe once again well, that was the barge hitting it in the 1950s as spotted by exploring Dave Eagle Eye Dave strikes, Eagle us, Eye strikes Dave. again not Cotton Eye <laughs> Joe <laughs> and there we go that was the damage caused in the 1950s by the runaway barge Thank you so much for watching this ALW Research Team video. Please subscribe if you haven't done already and check out my Instagram and Facebook pages. And I'll see you every Thursday at 4pm UK time with another video. Bye bye for now.